Okay, so we have the crew from the We Love ATL Instagram hashtag project. Why don't you guys introduce yourselves? I'm uh, Brandon Barr. Aaron uh, Corey Moxley. Yeah, I knew that we would do that. <laughs> I'm Tim Moxley. Yeah, Aaron Corey. All right, and why don't you um, tell me a little bit, or tell everyone a little bit about what you're doing and how it started. Who wants to start? Say, Tim. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, well, um, last year, um, myself, Brandon, Aaron, and Keith Weaver started the uh, We Love ATL hashtag. Essentially, it grew out of um, some meetings that we had at Manuel's Tavern. We were discussing um, creating uh, a show about the city, or a gallery show about the city of Atlanta, uh, sourced from the citizens of the, of the city of Atlanta. Um, we took submissions last October. Um, we got 5,000 submissions during that month. Um, we had a gallery show. for a second. How did you explain how it's an Instagram project and what okay. the submissions were? Yeah, project. essentially um, the idea initiated whenever I was looking at Instagram and I was looking at the Atlanta hashtag. And I sort of was looking at it in grid view and I saw kind of this really awesome kind of six grid or nine grid of um, – of images about Atlanta that kind of told a sort of a mini story about the city. Um, now, if you go through the hashtag, you see there's lots of like stupid selfies and like gratuitous advertisements for like nightclubs and things like that. So uh, the hashtag itself is a little polluted with just that kind of stuff. Um, the just plain Atlanta hashtag. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Atlanta ATL. Um, so essentially, I had the idea of maybe trying to create a show uh, based around seeing that those images. Uh, I went to Youngblood Gallery and asked them if they'd be willing to host the show. They said they would. Um, Did you just walk from Manuel's Tavern to Youngblood? <laughs> well, this is all before Manuel's Tavern, actually. This is before I met Aaron and Brandon. Um, I I went and I talked to them. It would have been awesome if I would have done that. Um, <laughs> he actually, he actually all... did walk from Manuel's, but it was just another related to he sort of. Yeah, exactly. I was he just does that every day. Every time he goes anywhere, it's, it's walking from Manuel's. <laughs> right. It's where um, all the best ideas happen. Yes. Agreed. Um, so after that, I knew that uh, I, Maggie and Kelly from Youngblood agreed that they would host the show. Um, so I started reaching out to people that I didn't know necessarily personally from the Instagram team in Atlanta, um, but I appreciated their work. I appreciate their aesthetic, and like I knew that they were some somewhat already involved. Like I knew that Brandon was doing Insta Meets, and I knew that Aaron and Keith were both really active on Instagram. Uh, so I messaged them and I said, "Hey, I have an idea for a show. Would you be willing to, um, you know, join me to talk about it?" And uh, Aaron and Keith joined first, and we kind of the three of us sort of came up with a loose outline, uh, and we came up with the "We Love ATL" hashtag. And then we realized that we needed one more person to really round out the process, and we wanted a different aesthetic. So we asked Brandon to join us as well, and that was probably like meeting number two. Um, and then after that, um, I guess the general idea that we sort of came up with was to use Instagram as a means to gather images uh, about the city of Atlanta, about the lives of the people that live in Atlanta. Um, and that's sort of how it initiated. Um, do you want me to go on from there about the show and everything, or I can let one of these other guys talk for a second? Brandon, why don't you speak? Let me ask a question. So. Yeah. There was already an ATL hashtag. You were like, let's kind of purify this a little bit, get the ads off. Let's do a we love ATL hashtag and see what kind of response we can get. And you publicized this uh, show through that hashtag? Yeah, there was, there was um, we sort of brainstormed, uh, myself, Aaron, and Keith, about the hashtag. And we realized that we love ATL was sort of like a proclamation. So instead of just saying, like, Atlanta, it's like saying, I love Atlanta, we love Atlanta. It's, um, it sort of leads the viewer to, it's almost a call, a call to action in, just in the hashtag. Um, and so, uh, yes, we, from there we used uh, Facebook, our social networks, um, reaching out to any and all publicity folks that we're friends with to just get the word out about asking for submissions. Um, we pretty much spent at least half of September and then all of October just really pushing, 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 trying to get people to submit. And that's when we got the 5,000 submissions. Um, made it and um, print it. We had the show in, that ran the, uh, the entire month of December at Youngblood. And um, the whole idea behind this as well was that we were going to 
it was about bringing people together about their love of photography, their love of Atlanta, and also we wanted to raise some money for charity. So essentially the way that this all worked out was that we sold all the images and we sold posters and other merchandise uh, at the gallery opening, gallery opening and during that month, and we raised uh, about, what was like $3,500, I think, for the Atlanta Community Food Bank. Okay, I'm going to ask you about um, the charity part in a second, but um, Brandon, you are already doing Instagram meetups? Uh, yeah, I mean, I had, uh, I um, have a bad habit of becoming organizers of, of social events, even though I'm an introvert. Um, but I had kind of become this sort of weird, weirdly become the designated person that everyone kept asking for. Uh, whenever there was two people wanting to do a meetup in town, um, when they decided they wanted to do a meetup, they would end up like messaging me on Instagram to announce it as a meetup. Um, so I just sort of became the kind of de facto person who was making that happen. Um, you are like the town crier for town that. crier sort of, yeah. Um, and I've been doing that for probably six months prior to We Love ATL. Um, and but I think that you know, I mean, the two things are so connected. Like basically, you have We Love ATL was was bringing together a group of photographers, you know, to experience and celebrate the city. And that's literally, you know, what these insta meets, these monthly insta meets, were doing. Um, so once once we got through the show and sort of said, okay, we love ATL as a broader thing that has a bigger life of its own, which is um, something that we kind of came to, to that because once we finished the show, we realized people were still using the hashtag. Um, and, um, and so at that point we were like, okay, well this has got, this is something beyond just the, I mean, we originally had we love ATL was the mechanism for curating the show and after the show we realized people really it sort of, you know, it, it had gathered its own steam. So one of the things we did immediately after that was to just um, to think of ways in which we could keep activating the community and the, the Insta meets make a lot of sense. It's a, it's a sort of, you know, a way for, you know, generally about once a month, everyone to get together um, and, you know, experience either a new a new road trip or a new area of town or uh, a new building that they haven't been in um, and, and just sort of meet each other in real life as opposed to just seeing, uh, seeing everyone's uh, usernames. So you realized that the hashtag became more than just a submission for the show. It became that people were into it, but that wasn't the end goal. For people, is people are more interested in it as a community building? Like I to think it's, I don't know when it, I mean, we didn't really, I felt like we figured that out in about January, Tim. Mm -hmm. Like, after the show was over, um, and, and then it just kept, it, you know, people kept submitting to it. Um, and it was a good group of people that was continuing to submit to it. I think that that's when we realized that it just had a life of its own, that at some point over the course of the curation process, between the curation process I would say it was it sped up during October. We thought we were going to get like 500 submissions. We ended up getting 5,000. Then it slowed down a little bit, but it was still building because we had about by the time the show started, we had about 8,000. I would say. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah. people people have been submitting during the curation process because we had to define the sort of uh, we we like knew the last image that was that was in under the deadline. Um, and then uh, and then they submitted during the show, and it was after the show. We were like, oh, well, everyone's just, you know, keeping up with the momentum, but once the show was over and people were still submitting, that's when I think we realized that this is something that we wanted to continue and that other people wanted to continue. Tell me, um, tell me about the curation process. I mean, that 5,000 images, how to, where to start, were you looking for something in particular? Were you trying to get... Um, kind of a, a broad view of the Atlanta, you know? Were you going for the all skylines? Like, what was the what was the thought behind the images you eventually selected for the show? I think we were looking for a, a broad picture of what Atlanta was. And I think the beauty of the hashtag and anybody being able to submit to it is that we got people from the north, from the south, from the east, all over Atlanta were submitting just their perspective of Atlanta. And I, know, I remember talking with Tim on the front end, and it was, it was this idea of we know that 
Atlanta kind of has some negative, you know, uh, perspectives from the outside for people that don't live in Atlanta. And I think the goal of We Love ATL from the beginning is we want the people of Atlanta to tell what they love about Atlanta. And so I think when we started looking through those hashtags in 5,000 pictures, it was a little bit of a daunting task at, at first, but to be able to just see um, kids playing to skylines to people's favorite restaurants to, I mean, anything you name it. I mean, it was more than we could have kind of even dreamed up. This, this kind of broad picture of uh, almost convincing us why we loved Atlanta so much by seeing everybody else's perspective of it. It was this holistic approach of, yeah, I love all those things about Atlanta too, and I couldn't have put it to words, but this hashtag kind of brings Atlanta to life, you know, through everybody else's perspective. Okay, so you get a gazillion more submissions than you expected. You do this show that was a blowout. I mean, it was packed, right? Yeah, yeah we had over a thousand, we believe. Which is not that common in Atlanta. Uh, well, it's actually it was the biggest opening that Youngblood had ever had in their 15 years. Okay, so yeah. <laughs> so you realize you were a little slow on the uptake, but after and when more <laughs> things started coming in, you realize like maybe we've got something that people are latching on to. And so yeah. fast forward, you're like, okay, we'll keep it going with the Insta meets and then who had the the truck thought? That was, uh, that was I everyone. think that I remember us brainstorming, but I pretty clearly remember that Brandon was the one that threw that idea out there. <laughs> I think we all agreed immediately that it was a great idea. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think that's why Brandon and I became friends so quickly. Perhaps we both People that are wired to think I'll buy an impossible to drive <laughs> an impossible to, vehicle and drive it around to shove a Lord around. Yeah. <laughs> to, um, to be to be fair, I have yet to drive it. Tim is the only one who knows how to drive mm -hmm. a beast, um, but I'm going to learn. I was yeah. checking it out. I was checking it out at Flux Night. I'm yeah. I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> Um, okay, so when did the truck idea happen? You guys did a Kickstarter. Well, I, well, before we get to that, I would say that what we did was we sort of stepped back and we said, what do we want to do for the next year? And we wanted to make sure that we, like, we, I think we still want to do, uh, we still want to do gallery shows, but what we really wanted to do was just try to find something, you know, to do something different and do something that was evolving from, from what we had done in the past. Um, and that we threw out a bunch of ideas from music festivals to, you know, to um, just a lot of different ideas. And the truck was sort of one key element, and I think what we liked about it was the idea of um, being able to, to, I mean, the hashtag really is in a lot of ways um, a, a sort of celebration of, of the city streets. Um, and so what we really liked the idea of and what we always like the idea of um, the, the We Love ATL has always been a, um, uh, uh, a, a, sort, of po a sort of populist, populist. populist movement. Um, and so for us, like the idea of bringing it out of a gallery to, to put that into a, you know, into a space where people aren't used to seeing art um, and, you know, to put it in a space where people are more likely to see a, a corn dog you know, from a truck, um, was was kind of interesting to us. Um, Perhaps a taco. So, so yeah, I mean, I think that we knew that that was a pretty good idea, and then we just had to figure out how to make it happen, and then that's where the the Kickstarter and Tim's uh, journey to making Georgia to a Wonder Bread factory <laughs> uh, started. That must have meant something. It was awesome. Um, and you guys had pretty. Uh, quick success with the Kickstarter. You met your goal before. Mm -hmm. I think we met our goal with about, maybe about ten days left. That's about amazing. two days. About two days after we started sweating a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> well, and we actually didn't do the the full thirty days for our Kickstarter. We we really were just a little over three weeks on our Kickstarter because um, we really wanted to end it on uh, on the month. So I, I think that in total it was about. Just a little over two and a half weeks, we raised seventy-five hundred dollars, and our goal was sixty-five hundred. 
That's amazing. Okay, so you get the money, you get the truck, and you were doing all of this with the timing for Atlanta Celebrates Photography. So last year's Atlanta Celebrates Photography, which is in October every year, was when you did the the call and when you were planning the Young Blood show. And then this year, the goal was to have the truck up and running to be able to participate in the different events. Yeah, last year we were not affiliated with Atlanta Celebrates Photography in any way. Mm -hmm. uh, but this year they approached us, um, or we they, we sort of have a Twitter banter, and we ended up um, talking to them and uh, okay. collaborating on some events um, <laughs> for uh, for October. So yeah, we had a hard deadline when we had to get the truck ready and going. I so what did you have to do? What did you have to do to outfit it? Uh, well, I drove to Macon and picked it up and drove it back at a blazing 60 miles an hour. Um, got it back here. It actually runs like a top, so it didn't need any mechanical work. Uh, we had Sean from the Loss Prevention, who's painted a bunch of mural belt or beltline murals. Um, did the King of Pops trucks and the King of Pops murals. He's a friend of mine. Um, he painted the outside of the truck with his team and then um, got a guy who lives in the loft next to me um, agreed to trade out photography work for some carpentry and uh, he built uh, the benches in the back and hung the walls and we went in and trimmed them out and painted them and that was pretty much the full extent. Uh, Aaron had a friend build steps for us. I think the whole process has been us reaching out to people to say you wanted to help? Awesome! Now you can help. Today's <laughs> <laughs> your lucky day! Yeah, exactly. <laughs> So I'm going to just talk about my experience with the truck. Um, so this past Saturday night was Flux Night, which is a huge night of public art and performances in Atlanta that happens once a year. Um, and you guys had an awesome spot there, which is incredible to be able to um, participate, especially with a new project like that, I think, at a um, in an event that has such a reputation. So. When you come up to the truck, there were it's lit from the inside, the back is open, there's steps, and for a flex night, the whole time I was there, there was a line of people waiting to walk in, and so you go up the steps, and then there are 8x8 eight eight images pinned to the sides of the truck the whole way through, and then I thought it was great at the end, there was... Um, a poster and a description of thank you of the people who have supported in various ways the project and then a little bit a short description kind of about how it started and what you were doing. Yeah. Um, and then the merchandise table which is always my favorite. Yeah. Amazing t-shirts, a special edition hoodie which I wore. I've been pretty much wearing it every day. It's super soft. Nice. Um, I, you know, I'm like, I'm supporting the whole song. <laughs> Art. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I was I had a very professional business meeting this morning, and I wore it because I was like, "Hey, look! I mean, it's it's art." Um, so, so how has it been? Kind of, you had this this big um, gallery setting, even though I would say Young Blood's gallery is pretty laid back and informal. Um, but you had it was a blowout. You had a thousand people. You sold a ton of work, and then how is it? How's the transition been to um, parking and being included or kind of as a, so far it's been sort of a, you're latching on to different events that are already happening around the city as opposed to the We Love ATL being its own destination event, right? Right. How has, how has that been? I think that the first, um, the, so far we've done events for Atlanta Celebrates Photography and we've done Flux. And that's all we've done so far. So I think that we're almost we're still in the beginning stages. Like I think every time we go out, we are still figuring out the process of how we can make things more efficient, especially when we have a lot of people. Um, you know, we're we're figuring out that we don't have rubber bands for the posters and you know little things like that. And so I think you know this. I feel like that the first few, the first two for sure were definitely like soft openings, and Flux was just bam. I mean, there were so many people that. We just we just did the best we can. We have you know everyone has their their short description that they just repeat all night long, trying to engage people as they're going out of the truck and explain to them that you know this is a mobile photography studio or mobile photography gallery, and that 
you know, this, the sale of these prints come from people all over the town, and uh, that the sale of these prints um, is for the Atlantic Community Food Bank. Uh, so yeah, I mean, I, I feel like after Flux, I feel like we could probably handle just about anything because there were so many people there. What do you feel like their um, sales wise? So when the people came last year to Young Blood, they everyone that walked in the door knew and it, they had the intention of going there. They knew what they were going to see. They knew what they were going for, and kind of probably for the most part, everyone knew the premise. And then for these events, it's um, you're catching people who don't are, aren't already familiar because they're coming to screen a film or go to Flux Night or something like that. So how have the sales been this versus the Youngblood where people were prepared to, you know, they knew that they were going into an environment where there was going to be art for sale? I think so far the sales, we haven't sold as much as we did on our opening night last year at Youngblood, but the exposure that we're getting to people and are actually expanding um, the whole uh, people, the understanding of the project, that's really what this has been more about, it seems like, um, the latest, at least the first two or three uh, outings that we've had. You want to weigh in? Are you also, beyond just sales of the prints, are you also interested, you're saying exposure, so are you trying to get exposure for the Instagram photographers whose work is on the wall, or are you trying to get exposure to expand the We Love ATL community where you would have more people participating? Right. I, I, would, I would say that, yeah, I, I would say that the answer is both. Um, yeah. and, 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 you know, I mean, what we've sort of, we've already realized, I mean, coming out of Flux, I think we've had another 1,500 images added to the hashtag, well, some fantastic images. Yeah. Um, and I, and you've also had a lot of sort of celebrate you know celebra celebration moments that have happened where people have tagged uh, other people who or taken a picture of their friends picture on the truck and um, so since Saturday night you've had fifteen hundred submissions is it about I'd say it's about that yeah. one was mine it was of the truck I'm sure <laughs> I'm sure <laughs> at least twelve hundred of the fifteen hundred were <laughs> of the truck. <laughs> Um, the, actually, most of them, most of them were were um, retags of older photos. So what it yeah. was was people coming through the truck, going, "Oh, this is something really cool. I I took that one shot one time that I would like to share." Yeah. Um, so a lot of it, a lot. I think that's a and that's a fairly common behavior that we've seen. I think coming out of the truck is that people will come out and say, "Oh, I should join this. Like mm -hmm. this is interesting." So if we're building, if we're building the community of photographers, and we're and we're building the quality of the hashtag, like that's important to us. I think that we've realized probably, and things will change. You know, I think that we're still learning um, in in terms of the mobile photography gallery. Um, I think that for us, it will probably never 100% replace the gallery shows that we're doing. And I think we're kind of, uh, I think that we're blessed that October. Has um, a lot of different types of, of truck events. So, Flux was a very high volume event. We had we probably had a thousand people go through that truck that night. Um, so, in in a lot of ways, from an exposure standpoint, it, or, or from a number standpoint, it was it was as successful as mm -hmm. the Youngblood opening. Um, just that one event. Um, we've had some other events where people are going to a film screening. And what tends to happen there is it's very slow, and then you get a, a group of people kind of going through all at once. Um, we've uh, done some farmers markets, and that tends to be actually a more of a low volume, high sales environment because I think they're already in. They're already in the I'm I'm buying uh, an expensive zucchini and um, and a, a, a beaded. And you know what goes great right with zucchini? Pictures. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, I mean, we were, we were <laughs> in that particular environment. We were we were down a line from two or three other, you know, two or three other artists. So I think people are already in that that acquisition mode. Um, so I think that you know, for us, that's been a little bit of an experiment. This sort of that kind of that gallery experience has changed every time, which is really fascinating to me. But I think it's also for us. You know, we we're gonna have a, um, on October twenty fifth um, the closing event for um, for Atlanta celebrates photography, 
um, is, a, is, a, is a more proper gallery show at the Fed Gold Gallery um, with We Love ATL. So I think that we're going to have an opportunity to, and all the images that we've been showing over October are going to be at that event. So, um, you know, we've been experimenting with the kind of pop-up gallery um, approach, and, and that's, you know, I think it's, that's why when we say it's good for exposure, it's also good because all those people, you know, one of the things we tell them is to come back at the at, at the end of the month. So I'm I'm expecting that event to be particularly successful in terms of sales and raising money. What I think is interesting about this project, so you kind of have two components going where a lot of people feel intimidated to go into a traditional gallery like that's maybe they feel like that's not really their place and that everything in there is going to be too expensive and so by doing the the truck you're able to get people literally in the door but um, and looking at art and in a way that feels more comfortable and more accessible and then on the flip side it's also I mean Instagram is something that so many people use and I think that a lot of people might think, oh, well, I'm not, um, I'm not a real photographer, so I couldn't possibly participate in a meetup or a, something like that. And then to be able to have an experience where you walk in and you say, oh, anyone can submit to this, and these aren't like professional photographers that get to be on the walls. It's just anyone who has an interesting image of Atlanta. And so maybe that it's also um, very democratic in that way too so both from a collector and a photographer it's a, a very accessible entry point yeah I think that uh, in it, one of the lines I used over and over again at flux for sure was 98 percent of the people that are posted on the wall here are not professional photographers and and you just kind of see people, their, their brain starts clicking. Like, they want to go ahead and tag their images right there. Like, because they have an opportunity to be hung on a gallery. And I think that's what we've talked about so many times, what made Youngblood Gallery, that first opening show, so successful is you post one person's picture that is not a photographer, and they bring three or four people to come to the show to see their picture on the wall. That's why we had so many people. And I think that's the beauty of of this project is um, it's a little different than what you would see in a gallery and we kind of like that kind of stripped down idea of anybody can post, anybody can make art, anybody can celebrate art. And I think the other aspect of it that you mentioned was uh, I, I even kind of had a new thought and I, I hadn't thought this and maybe Brandon and Tim had before but this whole idea that even submitting your picture to the hashtag is potentially doing good for charity. So this idea of submitting your picture that might get chosen to be hung that someone might buy <laughs> will actually go towards straight towards Atlanta Community Food Bank. And so it's this idea of also, hey, I'm loving Atlanta. I'm submitting my pictures. Um, and there's potential that, you know. It could help someone. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> going think, to good colleges by that. So I think what's also interesting to me is all the things that make the project really, really successful in, in my mind and, and, and kind of uh, all the things that we're saying are things that people normally dog Instagram about and, and sort of um, use as criticisms of Instagram, right? And, and I think that all of us as active users of Instagram have done that too. Like, oh, all, all this is is a, you know, a place where amateur people are taking photos and trying to get recognition, um, you know, um, and they're trying to get people to view photos and they want to be on the popular page. Like, in, in essence, we've taken all the sort of behaviors that, that people apply to Instagram being bad um, and created a system within that which allows people to do really good things. Um, allows people to celebrate the city, allows people to connect with other people through their art, and most importantly allows people to eat. Um, Tim, I, you have a better sense of the statistics, but every dollar that, that we raise for the Atlanta Community Food Bank, uh, I think it is a feed four people, is that correct? Yeah. yeah, they're able to buy in such bulk that they turn a quarter every quarter into a meal. 
Um, where are you going? <laughs> <laughs> she I'm doesn't care about charity. <laughs> are you laughing? She's like, not cool. <laughs> <laughs> That's nice. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I was going to yeah, say. Yeah, I hear so, you about the thing. I also know that my 14-year-old dog, if I don't um, open the door, is going to pee on the floor, and that would be. No, oh, no. Oh, yeah. Yeah, um, so. So let me, so every dollar, four, that's insane. Yes, yeah, so potentially yeah. whenever you buy a 8x8 photograph, you help feed 140 people. That's incredible. So let me ask you about that. How, where, um, okay, so coming from, you're giving the photographers their due and sort of saying this is your opportunity to, um, to not only just shoot pictures and show with your friends, it's, you know, you can get it up on the wall and it's exciting and fun. Where did, at what point, I mean, how did you decide that you would sell these images and that the money would go to charity as opposed to selling the images and having the money go to the photographers or splitting the money between you and the photographers like a traditional gallery would? It was always from the very beginning about giving money to charity. So when the original concept came about, the idea was to have a gallery show, sell the images, and give the money to charity. I think that the, we are about community and bringing the community together, again, through the love of photography, through the love of Atlanta, uh, at Instameets, at gallery shows, like getting people to come to the gallery um, and meet each other. Because I think, you know, especially during Youngblood last year, a lot of people were sort of running into each other and saying, oh, you're at... <laughs> So and so, I good to meet you. I love your photos, and you know I'm pretty sure that you know there's probably more than one relationship came out of that opening night. It was um, definitely the biggest insta meet that we've ever had. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Basically, essentially, that's what it was. Uh, yeah. Somebody knew somebody that was uh, you know had something on the wall. Um, yeah. So and then how? Um, I've always been curious about the choice of Atlanta Community Food Bank. I mean, to me it makes sense on the one hand that this is an organization that does a lot of good for a lot of people in the city. And then on the other hand, you know, me coming from an arts nonprofit y kind of thing, you know, you're doing an arts thing, why the choice of that as opposed to the money going to an Atlanta arts organization? I think that um, originally the idea was that we were having the show during the month of December. It was during the holidays, and food just, it seemed like the natural, it seemed just like a good idea. Um, and it's a basic need. It's, the, you know, food, shelter. I mean, I love supporting the arts. I mean, I, I give to charitable organizations all the time. Um, and I know that maybe they're in some ways a little worse off for funding than maybe the food bank is. Um, but, uh, I mean, I know that we chose the food bank and we're going with the food bank right now. I think it's more important to us to be able to support local Atlanta sure. organizations. And at some point moving forward, we may switch gears and support, you know, we're, we're still in talks about how we're going to handle that, actually. Well, and so. it could be, here's where I start throwing out ideas. <laughs> here's where I start throwing out ideas that people don't ask for. It's okay, we get pitched um, all the time. What'd you say? I said it's okay. We get pitched all the time. <laughs> I was going to do that. I was just saying that it could be interesting as you're trying to do gallery shows and partnerships that you could partner with um, one Atlanta nonprofit and specifically do a show or maybe even a theme show around what their organization is about. And That's then nice. three months later, partner with a different organization and at a different yeah. venue and do it that way. It's pretty yeah, and, and that's, you know, for us, like, as we move past the month of October, the month of October is really about sort of establishing the truck as, a, as an ongoing entity and establishing, you know, what we imagine probably are going to turn into quarterly shows. Um, I think that, you know, um, and, and I think that for us beyond October, we really like the idea of, I mean, we'll definitely be slowing down the pace because we can't do 17 shows in, uh, in the course of a month. Um, Why not? Uh, <laughs> that sounds fantastic. What's wrong with that? <laughs> uh, if there are 17 people watching this video at some point that would like to drive the truck and open it, then then yes, we can do 17 tr 17 shows. Um, but uh, you know, I think that 
you know, for us, uh, we've already talked about the idea of themed, um, starting to, to do a more traditional gallery um, approach in which we do shows that have themes or have particular partners or particular sort of, you know, focuses. So I, I think that you'll definitely see us move out, uh, move out or move beyond only uh, the sort of curation structure that we've set up um, for Youngblood and for, and for, I think for us it's, it's important to, we'd like to establish this as an ongoing, um, you know, the, the truck gives us a really interesting foundation, both in terms of marketing and in terms of getting people's work out there. I think it also just gives us an interesting um, platform to use that we can, uh, that we can um, expand upon in a lot of different ways. Um, uh, both because it's, it's as blank wall as any gallery, but the, also the fact that we can take it anywhere um, completely changes it up as well. So it's truly, I think, a blank canvas in a way that some, some other gallery options aren't. So I'm going to wrap it up, but I want to ask, um, so the 8x8s are for sale, and they're $35? Correct. And you don't take them that night, correct? You get them mailed to you after? Correct. And are the prints signed by the photographers? They're not. No. Um, we'll, <laughs> we'll have, like, the artist's, the artist's name will be, yeah. will be on them, but... And, and we want to be able to always point back to who took the picture so they can get the credit for it. Um, but I, I, I don't know. That's kind of a cool idea that we've never thought about having the artist sign it. So. Yeah, I think you know it would it would introduce a new wrinkle to us, you know, yeah. curation wise. Um, yeah. I mean, right now the curation process for us is so yeah. there are eight by eights, and that we've also um, explored some other options sizes. Um, for flux, we also had 10 by 10s at 50, um, and um, we may introduce a larger size dependent on resolution. You can't really go too much beyond 10 by 10 or 12 by 12 without, you know, um, without reaching the limits of some, you know, iPhone resolutions. Um, but we've explored if there's if there's a certain image that we have a larger image that we might might do some larger even larger sizes, um, you know. But well, we've kind of got it now down to a, a, a science of curation in which, you know, we like photos as a sort of initial um, uh, short list, um, which gives us, as because we're all logged into the Instagram account, it gives us a, literally a way to, to sort of go, okay, this is, these are the ones that we sort of liked. That during the month of October, those are actually also going to a projection downtown, um, which... Uh, um, Two artists, uh, Mike Boutte and Stacy McKay, he made a custom um, a custom application for us that runs uh, at the Digital Arts and Entertainment Lab at GSU uh, and is projecting uh, a continuous slideshow of images. Um, That's that, amazing. Yeah, so basically the last 50 images that we as curators have liked are constantly being projected from dusk till dawn every night in October. So if I go through and I see that you haven't liked my we love ATL hashtag of the truck, then I know that I have not even made the short list. <laughs> that would be cool. Um, because well, I yes. think, I mean, it may not have been the most original photo, but I think the filter that I chose just... Aaron, 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 can you go through and like it before this is over? Yes. Do me I'm a gonna favor. Check. I'm going to check. Uh, upload it again. Make sure you put the Kelvin filter on, and it'll for sure get liked. I, I, I promise that. That's and then, fire. and then after we've liked the photos, we have a process in which we reach out with a message on Instagram, the to email us um, at our email address. Then we communicate with them with a second email um, to get the highest resolution photo. So it's it's actually a fairly cumbersome process, but one that I think we've gotten now after after doing it, we've gotten it kind of down to a science, um, and it allows us to re pretty quickly turn around things. It's still it's uh, it could be easier and, and more automated, but um, we're getting there. I think the only way it could be easier would be if we didn't ask for permission and explain what what we're doing with the project. But that's such a an integral part of the process because. We want to make sure that people understand that whenever they give us the image that we're going to print it and that we're going to sell it and that we're going to give the money to charity 
and then we're not going to sell it to any of corporate partners or anything like that. So this has never been a vehicle for us to make any money or for us to make this project into some like huge money making. Who wants thing. to make money from art? That would just not be fun at all. That would be not very authentic. I don't want to make money from art like this. <laughs> my, my own art. I hear that. Okay, well, thank you guys so much. Thank you. Super thank excited you. that I'm just excited that this whole Google on air situation worked out. <laughs> we'll see if I can ever locate the video after, then that'll be good. Does it show the people along the bottom in the video, or does it just show the main person? I think it just shows the main person, but I'm not positive. Because it's been amazing to watch along the bottom, everyone like take a sip of beer, sort of like <laughs> it's like doing the wave. <laughs> yeah. It's like I, yawning. I've right? only been broadcast on mine the whole time, so if it was recording mine, then that's all you'd get is me. No, no, that I think awesome. it actually. Well, you can. <laughs> that would be a bummer. <laughs> Aaron, just so you know, and and I don't want to. I'll give everyone at, at home. If you click on your image, yeah, it, that's what it'll put up top. Well, I definitely want so to see click on, you want to see quite them? a while, so that's good. Right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I you're a pretty you're a pretty person, so I, I, I it's hard for me not to agree with you there. <laughs> I'm just looking at myself now. <laughs> uh, you're like, now that I know, I didn't have to look at the rest of you. This oh whole time. shoot! <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Well, thank, thank you so much. Guys. Good luck with everything. Thanks, I'm really excited about this project and to continue to see you all around the city. Yeah, and awesome. um, you'll have to give a final tally at the end of your seven, 17 events? Yeah, ish. Well. Ish. Ish. <laughs> What's an ish, ish. event? <laughs> Just oh, a we'll, drive we'll by where happens. you throw photos out the window? Uh, <laughs> fling them. Yeah. <laughs> There, there is one event. Um, there's one event that has been on and then off and then on and then off and is now on again. So that's yeah. part of the ish. And I we're open. To, we may, we may throw another one or two in, depending. We're, we're the good part about having the truck is that we can, we can, uh, if we, if we can find one of us available to drive it, then we can get it somewhere. Assuming either of the other of you guys learn how to drive it. Right. <laughs> That's coming up. I mean, I'm not intentionally holding off on that, but it's been a good side effect. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like if Tim can do it, then, you know, can I anyone it? can. <laughs> All right, well, I wish you guys continued success with this. I think it's, um, it's an amazing project just from about a million different perspectives. So congratulations. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks for your time. Appreciate it. Have a good night. Right. Bye. See you.